Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's second Friday food, wine, and travel show with the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association. It's really every second Tuesday, every second Friday, Nancy and I get to sit and conversate, conversate, that's a new word, have a conversation a with either word. a travel writer or a mm-hmm. travel representative from a different destination. All of the members of the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association, a great group. I encourage you to go to their website. It is ifwtwa.org. And today we're excited to welcome back Norm uh, Bauer. Norm was on our show, I think it was last year, and he was talking about his experiences traveling uh, during COVID. He went to Mexico. I think we even did the recording while he was in Mexico. I can't remember. He was hopping around a bit. Uh, but during COVID, he decided to do a lot of writing. He, he wrote some fiction, uh, which I want to hear about because there's aliens and stuff going cool. on with that. Uh, but also <laughs> put together a new book called COVID Stories, Positive Lessons That Started Very, Very, I was going to say very, very badly. And uh, yeah. but they're positive mm-hmm. lessons. So you can get it now. It profiles 29 writers, some of them from the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association, including Chris Cutler, <laughs> who's the president, Madam President. And uh, you can also go get it on Amazon or go to his website, asknormb.wixsite.com forward slash COVID story. So welcome back, Norm. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for asking. Me. And uh, hi, Lisa. And hi, Nancy. Hi. Hey. It's good, good to, to have you. you back. Yeah, this time yeah. we get to see you. Mm-hmm. And um, yes, for sure. Where, I know we were in Pennsylvania. I think yeah. when we talked with you, where were you last? Were I you was, in Mexico? I was. I was probably in Mexico. Of the three mm-hmm. years that we've been totally permanent nomads, I would say almost half of our time we were quote unquote stuck in Mexico due to COVID. <laughs> so we were there from March of 2020 until June of this this past year, 2021. So. Yeah, when, when you and I spoke, you were in PA, my old, my old home state, and we were in, in Puerto Morales, Mexico, just south of Cancun. And, uh, you know, a lot of people really felt sorry for me because I was about 15 minutes away from the beach, living in a really wonderful community that was very affordable. And it's kind of like uh, not a bad place to be stuck when you can't really mm-hmm. travel back to Europe and don't have a place back in the United States anymore. And you were you having know, champagne on the plane. Not yes, snakes. exactly. Well, it's, it's really, I mean, we got stuck in Kenya and um, our, my passport got taken away. Oh, my. And, well, you know, I didn't realize because this was, was in the 70s, not, yeah, not, this, not during COVID. Yeah. Um, got it. Not during COVID, but I didn't realize that the man, he kept asking for chai, which is means tea. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, you got a teapot right there. Go get some. You know, I was very flippant, okay. and I didn't realize that it, he meant he wanted to bribe money. Uh huh. And so I just didn't bribe, and he said, yeah. "Well, come back tomorrow, and you can get your passport." And I did that for like a year and a half. And um, so this was in the seventies. I'm just yeah, gonna say. So that. I was like, okay, well, um, I guess I better do something to make money. So I taught art, and to all the expat wives that were bored and had nothing to do. And so I taught them how to oil paint and made money and I didn't have to pay taxes. Ha, 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 ha. And, <laughs> and then I met this lawyer and went to work for him. And he said, it's real simple. You just apply for a duplicate passport. I'm like, yeah. Oh, duh. Yeah. <laughs> so well, got, we were all young once and naive. Yeah. So and then I got the, the passport and I was really kind of upset that I did because then I had to leave. So. That kind of but there's stuff. a great but there's a great example of something that started badly. No mm-hmm. one wants to have their their passport confiscated, mm-hmm. but yet yeah. the net result, indirect result, was that That's you started cool. painting and you started monetizing and you mm-hmm. started becoming more savvy and more mm-hmm. travel friendly and everything. And you know that unfortunately or fortunately is is the nature of life. Sometimes those bad lessons teach us mm-hmm. so much more than all the wonderful experiences that we hopefully enjoy as well. Ooh, yeah, and another good thing, passports. don't panic. Oh, yeah. The don't panic thing. Don't panic. Don't panic. I, I want to say panic. about passports, something that started negatively, right, and went positive is getting your passport is a real pain in the butt, as we all know. Yes. But now oh, yeah. they passed the law that we can renew our passports online. I this is it. the coolest thing on yes. the planet. And we need to yes. renew ours, Nancy, because you never know. 
<laughs> already okay. i know we need we always need to yeah we need to renew ours i was just thinking that so this there are positive things through covid nancy and i've yes. been traveling full time and um as you know, pet setting. Thanks to Trusted House Sitters. It was you who posted that on mm -hmm. Facebook once, Norman. I'm like, we should interview them for a show. And then next thing you know, this is what our life has been like, there uh, which is go. awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was a positive story uh, traveling. But there've been a, there's obviously been devastation of death and people yeah. passing and uh, yeah. businesses lost and everything. But reading through the story, and I don't want to give the stories away because I want people to read them. But the stories from your book really seem like people got more in touch of their senses, uh, they, they connected with nature, they got creative mm -hmm. like you did. Uh, and yeah. we want to talk about your fiction stories. because, <laughs> But it seems like it, these positive things were things that hopefully as COVID goes away, and I'm saying it's going away, that yes, we'll keep those senses, you know, that yeah. we've learned. Well, well, let's hope that's from, from your mouth to God's ears, as the saying goes, because no one thinks this thing can last forever, even though, you know, here it is two years and it's still been going on. But the reality of it is, is that if we if we get into our little, you know, Scooby-Doo time machine and go back to spring of 2020, it's like this thing hit us like a like a ton of bricks, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, it came out of nowhere. We were actually in Thailand when COVID launched and we're right next to China. And my girlfriend mm -hmm. gets it the second week of January of 2020. And we're yeah. hearing about all these reports and we're thinking, oh, this is really blown out of proportion. And this type of hysteria cannot really be happening in the United States. And we happen to come back to the U.S. in March of 2020 for a wedding in the state of Ohio. Meanwhile, we went back to Southern California where, you know, we both used to live before. And uh, suddenly what we thought was exaggerated hysteria is not exaggerated mm -hmm. at all. I mean, they're, they're canceling sporting events and they're canceling concerts mm -hmm. and they're canceling this. And then we go to Ohio and sure enough, that run on the grocery stores of toilet paper and antiseptics mm -hmm. and everything. Holy, holy crap, this is really happening. And so it came on so suddenly and you know, but meanwhile, the good news is, is, you know, you see pictures of Southern California with clear skies and you see animals coming out of the out of the woods in, mm -hmm. in the national park because the people aren't there to frighten them. Uh, but meanwhile, you got people getting sick. You got people dying. It's like, oh, my God, it's like we literally got some good and some bad coming at all ends. And of course, a lot of businesses shut down and a lot of mm -hmm. travel industries went went quiet. And, you know, I wasn't able to write because who the hell wants to read about travel that you can't do because I wasn't traveling either and uh so it, it took several months for for things to kind of settle and then it went back into mass hysteria again and you know here we are again two years later but the net result is I look at COVID as being a positive experience for me and fortunately God's God's you know a God's willing is that we didn't have any death we didn't have any real adversity but it, it kind of uh, brought out creativity in me in writing. And because we weren't able to travel, it gave us a solid home for 15 months. And, you know, so I thought, all right, so when this is all said and done, there's got to be people that have great stories. And so I started pitching to a worldwide market and found other, other writers who also had good experiences. And so that was kind of like the impetus behind COVID stories. It's like, hey, you know what? people it's time to stop looking at just the bad stuff let's look at some right. of the good stuff and let's look around us because you don't have to pardon me look very far to find people who came out of it pretty solid mm -hmm. even better than they were before some mm -hmm. people have new businesses and right some people grew gardens. i love the bee lady and yes. it was the first mm -hmm. story in your book i love that she i mean and chris chris cutler you know going through breast cancer during ah. this whole thing and yeah wow. i remember you know her i think it was I don't know what year is what anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I just don't know. But I remember it was the end of, everybody thought it was the year we kicked COVID and her son, I think, taught her, was like, no, it's the year that you kicked cancers, you know, but, you know, and then yeah. I think yeah. there was, there's so much of that, of, of things that you're already going through that are dramatic in life, mm, uh, traumatic, yeah. dramatic. Um, and then to have COVID on top, you know, I know yeah. people, you know, friends who still can't get surgeries that they really do need, but right. it's not yeah. life or death, but eventually you're not having quality of life. So yeah. there, there are those negative things, but it is about, I think we need as a, as a humanity to also understand about how to survive and to have that kick butt attitude of yes. perseverance, 
but yeah. not be to the crazy point of survival because sometimes yeah. you can get in survival mode and stay in survival mode and that happens you know if you've had anything traumatic in your life you can start now that you've seen something traumatic or experienced it yeah. you can yeah. end up staying in survival zone but I like that about your book that you show mm. that perseverance and that you don't have to be in that crazy land well you're absolutely mode. right mm. and, and, a, and a lot of and a lot of the perseverance that I have was actually born by my mother who uh, you don't know this because we've never brought it up but she was a holocaust survivor oh wow so my mother my mother was born in pre-war europe she was uh, on the first train out of hungary uh and spent mm. three years in auschwitz so wow. you know when you talk about when we talk about overcoming mm. adversity when we talk about the survival instinct Man. And, you know no matter what no matter what we can deal with in today's world of you know 2022 nothing can compare to having to face death around you and cold and, and mm. illness and, and all, all the atrocities that happened and back then. Crazy, crazy. Right. Yeah. So when you talk about mm. when you talk about COVID or when you talk about any type of, of illness, I mean, you mentioned specifically Chris, who went through cancer and of, of all the writers who um, shared their stories, there were several cancer experiences. So mm. let's just take COVID out of the picture even just to deal with, with someone who has cancer, whether it be you or your spouse or a mm. child or a significant one or anything else like that, that in and of itself is going to make you tough. Now you put COVID on top of that when you can't interact like you would normally, you can't visit people in the hospital. It's like, mm. you know, and now you have a whole other level. Um, and you mentioned also some of the people who re-engage with nature and re-engage with hobbies and re-engage with families. And the one that particularly got me uh, is the romances that occurred mm. because of COVID, because you wouldn't think of, of something like this as being a catalyst for relationships, but yet several people in the story shared uh, how they met people in their lives. Had it not mm. been for COVID, these people never would have got together. It's like, that's just so random, but yet it's happened probably on a worldwide level. And also level. get down to what, what, um, what's important, what's important in yeah. a relationship. Yes. And I think mm -hmm. that yes. was one There's of no, the writers. Yeah. Yeah. She you, was talking about that. straight to the, the, the heart of matters, you know, like what's really important. It's like your priorities shift. 100%, 100%. Yeah. 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 And, and, and when it cut and again, you know, the, the saying is, you know, when the tough, when the going gets tough, the tough get mm -hmm. going and all that. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to today's world, again, you had mentioned earlier, some people who do need to have some, some surgery or some medical treatment, but yet, you know, the hospitals, they still aren't running as normal. And so you have to live with whatever you can't change, which unfortunately mm -hmm. in today's world, there's a lot of stuff going on out there that we cannot change. So this is a testament to us as human beings, as, as people who are surviving and dealing with this, like, what are you going to do? Are you going to complain? Are you going to whine about what's going on? Or are you going to, you know, follow that other opportunity? So you've lost your job. Okay. So now what, now what are you going to do? And so mm -hmm. that's where the creativity comes in. It's like, sometimes unless you are forced to do something, you know, sometimes people who need to lose weight or stop drinking or stop smoking, it's like, all the friends in the world can try to help them and make them do it, but it's not until they are forced and they find their own realization that they actually have the, the strength to do it. And when it comes to a disease like this with such, you know, such a worldwide impact, it's kind of like, you know, it's not until you are really put into that corner that you're going to find out what you're really made of. Yeah, exactly. You know, it is, it is interesting that um, in this day and age where we know so much more than people did say in the 1700s. We know more about cleanliness and antiseptics. We have more at our fingertips, more things available to, to make sure you don't get these kind of illnesses. And you just have maybe have to wonder how does it spread so quickly I mean, did we all just stop washing our hands one day or something? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you know? Not that we ever washed them to begin with. Exactly. No, can you so believe that maybe. we had to have PSAs teaching us how to wash our hands I, and for I how know. long? No, it's, no. It just makes it's me like go back to school. <laughs> what's it? The life of Brian. Um, yeah. Sorry, I have to get into the Monty Python side <laughs> oh, of it. No. Right? Stop picking your nose. Picking your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Off with his head. I know. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. We're in the, we're we're talking the same language here. Yeah, it's it's yeah. just it it really uh, it's it is amazing. I feel like COVID put us all back in wherever we're living, 
Yeah. And you, the giant mirror was in the room. The elephant, mm-hmm. yeah. we had to face the elephant in the room yeah. of no yeah. matter what the elephant was. And yeah. elephants always remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the art yeah. thing, you know? So it's kind mm-hmm. of like, it, it's an interesting time, but I love that you have these positive stories because mm-hmm. I think we're going to be needing them for a long time. But you um, had a couple members from IFTWA, the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers yes. Association. Does does that help to be part of, you know, organizations when things go crazy around the world? It's nice to have those networks, you know, to have those people, I think. Oh, yeah, there's no question about it. No question about it, Lisa. I think that of all the people who actually approached me with their stories, um, I would say probably uh, half of them were already writers and or travel writers. So they were already mm-hmm. people who their, their lives were impacted by COVID. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, most of, of course, the uh, if was organization is, is in the United States. But Chris Culler was one. And, and the story that you had mentioned, the bee lady, that was actually Michelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is another mm-hmm. member of our organization who had their story. So it was great because, you know, I was able to find people who won were already writers so I didn't have to do Mm -hmm. much in the way of editing and two they were already accomplished travelers and so they already saw how COVID was impacting their lives it just so happens that the uh the delays or the challenges they had with COVID were not really related to travel they were related to health benefits or health uh, challenges you know both Mm -hmm. cancer related one in the person and one in the person's spouse and everything Mm -hmm. so again you know when people deal with with the the medical issues that are facing us and and now you can't go with your loved ones to the hospital or you're there in the hospital by yourself and you can't have your loved one with you it's like you know a friend of mine just recently passed away who was younger than me and he ended up getting a stroke and was in the hospital for a couple Mm -hmm. weeks and it's kind of like his wife has been you know more or less by his bedside and he's in mexico and so mm. there, there was some question about whether or not his quality of service or his quality of health was worse in Mexico than it would have been in Canada where he lives. But, you know, sometimes when these when these health crises um, confront us, it, it really makes us be strong because you can either do that or you can fall apart. And as it happened, this gentleman uh, passed away peacefully uh, without too much pain and the wife is now having to deal with it. But you know, for whoever is listening to this at whatever age, you know, cherish your life and appreciate the things that you have going for us. And don't fixate, don't focus on those few bad things that are happening, no matter how traumatic or how dramatic they might be. Yeah, every second counts. Yeah, you know, because you do travel internationally down Mm -hmm. to Turkey. Um, You know, who knows where you're going to be next time we chat. Mm -hmm. But you're traveling around a lot. And of course, with COVID, we start thinking, okay, you have to go through all the tests and all the checks and you know we Mm -hmm. all need tsa but now it's like really a whole other deal um but you're going into different countries um any tips for those traveling because you've got to think you know i remember you know my my grandparents my my grandmother and step grandfather went from the channel islands of england to the states Mm -hmm. and then they went to mexico that's how we ended up living in mexico and he had a stroke (laughs) in mexico right oh wow this was our first time you know there with them we didn't know a lick of Spanish. We just came out of Africa. We didn't even know how to drive on the right side of the road. And next thing I'm driving in downtown Tijuana and going in, in the Revolution Square, which is really a big series of roundabouts, not knowing how to get off to Ensenada, pulling in, going Ensenada, Ensenada to people in, in these little garage things, you know, finally got right. my way home. But um, it was interesting when he had a stroke. We, I mean, it changed our lives. We yes, were driving. Was different. There was no Google at this point, and yeah. we were going from hospital to hospital, and they wouldn't take him. Mm-hmm. And we thought they were adults; that they were adult enough to have medical insurance for traveling. He had yeah. medical insurance in Guernsey, England, but not yeah. there. Mm-hmm. And so this became this whole big deal. And yeah. I, all I can tell you is the medical bills racked up because they only wanted mm-hmm. cash because he wasn't from the country, didn't have any medical yep. stuff. He was partly deaf. So and it was a whole deal. We don't actually even know to this day if it was really a stroke. And then he had mm. another surgery. We don't really know what was in that we little cup. But no, all I know don't. is we had kept taking cash out of the ATM, which was huge. And then having to take mm-hmm. withdrawals from credit cards, all of this big mess of yep. just to get the right amount of cash. Because you're limited on how much cash, and it was like you need to do it now. Do you? I would swear his medical went over a hundred thousand dollars. Just oh like, easy, wow. oh easy, wow. just easy. on medical, not yeah. just the. It wasn't really the medical procedures being expensive. It was how we had to get the cash. 
Yeah. And yes. going, it was just a huge mess. It's a big but, mess. So when you're traveling internationally for those traveling, get I mean, insurance. Get is, medical is it, insurance. How, I mean, can you even get medical insurance right now? Yes, because you of can. COVID? Well, maybe not now, but as a traveler, you yeah, do well, have the option of getting medical insurance while you travel. I highly yes. suggest people do I mean, that. What, what, because what's it you like? Never now? know. Yeah, Norm, since well, you guys are doing it. It's, it's, it could so be here's it. what's it. Here's what's interesting. Uh, when I left the United States, I had medical insurance. And then along the way, I turned 65. So heads oh. up for all of you people who are on Medicare or about to be on Medicare. So that was kind of like an unknown to me because I never did a lot of research. But come to find out that, you know, if something traumatic happened, um, obviously, I'm not going to be covered to the same degree in Turkey as I would be in the United States. But mm. Medicare does have a provision that if you have emergency services overseas, uh, Medicare will cover you. But with that being said, mm. I don't want to encourage anyone to use that as your primary. And I follow what, what Nancy said. And that mm. is there's a, there's several well-known um, uh, health insurance providers that, that specifically focus on travel insurance. As a matter mm. of fact, uh, I did a story with um, uh, Money Magazine. Uh, they actually interviewed me because of my travels, but they found the best travel companies out there. So if you'd like, uh, mm. I'll be happy to send you a copy of the, of the article from, um, from Money Magazine. And it, cool. it basically says, here's, here's insurance. And it's not that expensive. I mean, this is not the kind of insurance company you're going to use to go for a sprained leg. This is really mm. for anything that would be considered traumatic or dramatic. Right. Um, but it's always good to keep yourself covered because the quality of metal, medical care mm. outside the United States is very questionable. That's the bad side. The good side is the quality of medical care outside the United States is usually pretty good. But what's even more pretty good is that it's insanely inexpensive. I mean, there mm. was two occasions when my girlfriend had to be taken to the hospital via ambulance uh, for a couple of things that had to put her in the emergency ward. Uh, wow. One was in one was in Lisbon, Portugal. She ended up spending about three hours in uh, the in the emergency ward. And between the cost of that, between the cost of um, uh, fluids that they gave her and some drugs that they gave her, and everything else, it came out one more time. And the ambulance ride, it came out to be 106 euros, which is about 110 dollars. See, well, that's crazy. Uh, it is crazy. crazy. Thousands here. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and plus plus mounds of paperwork. And then yeah. in, in Chiang Mai, Thailand, when she got COVID, we, of course, had no idea what it was because we had never even heard of it at that time because it was the second week of January. But without getting into everything, uh, we had to, I had to figure out how to call the equivalent of 911 in Thai and get, a, get a, um, a, a paramedic over there, took her to the hospital. She's in there for about three hours, gave her all the tests. Uh, gave her IVs. We walked out of there with uh, about five or six different prescriptions, and that whole thing ran about 350 euros. So mm -hmm. to put that in, to put that in dollars and cents, it's somewhere you know around 400 US dollars. So you know there is this big thing called medical tourism where people go mm -hmm. to different countries specifically to get medical work done, whether it be right. dental work or LASIK surgery or mm -hmm. cosmetic surgery, and so. The United States is, is as glorious as it is and as patriotic as I am when it comes to their medical system. Mm -hmm. It is totally effed up, if I can be yeah. so graphic. It is, mm -hmm. it is no, a it's total, true. total, total mess. And COVID mm -hmm. is a great example of that because people want to start claiming that everyone has COVID because they get compensated for it. So you never know what numbers are accurate or not. Yeah, well, when I we, think when we lived in Mexico, most of the people that that we knew that came down to Mexico went there for dental care. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the dental care there where we were was absolutely excellent. Mm -hmm. And absolutely. Um, the, they're friendly. They're the bedside oh, manner. So the bedside nicer. manner is a so hundred percent different. I think in, in the states, we actually yeah. just did an interview. A few, we've mm -hmm. done a few interviews on this because the the bedside manner has kind of gone out the window. It's kind of get in, totally. get out. And, and it You're doesn't, patient. and it's not yeah. necessarily the doctor's fault no. or the nurse's fault. It is no. the system. It's the the system, system is program. And right. so when and they're I, overworked, I, they're yes. overworked. And even, you know, you look like Dr. Jackie Ubani is our um, cardio, uh, cardiologist on our shows every month. And we talk about this and she became a doctor. She's from Nigeria, served in the Navy here, got her medical degrees she does, she world traveler. She's, I think she's been to every country mm -hmm. and we talk about medical travel with her. We talk about, you know, 
becoming a doctor and she said what people don't see the amount of insurance that she has to pay oh, she, yeah. like yeah. it's not like here you know you know back in the day all mothers wanted their daughters to date a, you know date and marry a doctor it's not exactly what you think mm -hmm. you know? and the forms no. the, yeah. the the paperwork oh, that is required insane. in this country is crazy yeah. the yeah. last crazy. time we went to a dentist in mexico mm -hmm. i fell down a, a I fell down the sewage <laughs> hole. What do you call it? the manhole? The manhole. I yeah. fell down through the manhole Ouch. and almost yeah. ended up in the sewage. And oh <laughs> all that these people scary. came, bagged me, pulled, and you've got to think I'm hanging on. Yeah. In, like, in the sewer <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And I'm going in, and Nancy looks down like you're going in, and it's not funny. And I'm all <laughs> I'm trying to up. pull her out, and there's and, no and way. Yeah. And here's my top coming off to the world. Yeah, I was pulling her. Oh, nice. All these nice. people just came, picked me up got yeah. me out and I'm you know, you on your way girl. and yeah. off off I went went into yeah. the the dentist yeah. office and everything stops they come in oh you got to be sanitized you know they're yeah. like cleaning me up like yeah. it, this yeah. was took me into a room mm -hmm. and treated me like a patient and, right. they, yeah. and they were making sure are you okay are you okay if I started with then they even drove us over the border yeah yeah, yeah. They yeah. drove us over because they wanted to make sure we were both okay. And that yeah. That, yeah. that is, again, the, a test to the medical or the caring quality. The care. So, yeah. The care. So, yeah. you know, I think um, there's a, a lot of difference. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So good medical tips for travelers. I like this. <laughs> I want to know about the aliens, Norm. Come on. What's going on? Because now you've got this, your stories about getting through this and then going and well. writing something All right, so different <laughs> i'm, I'm going to get back into my scooby-doo time machine then because i i've been writing for probably 20 plus years i'm 60 67 now almost 68 um, but most of my writing has been along the nonfiction side i worked for a newspaper in orange county california and mm -hmm. i worked for a couple of trade publications and you know, I wrote a book back in 2010 that was kind of like my life story. And it was all about entrepreneurism mm -hmm. and the survival instinct and what have you. And, you know, but I, but I was I never really wrote any fiction, uh, but I, I have had my most of my life, some very, very vivid dreams to the point of where just before I wake up, I will literally see this dream unfold like a movie. And it's like I'm watching it on an old, you know, old reel. And so uh, cool. a couple of, a couple of these stories actually stayed in my mind, and I'm going to get to the story that you're referring to about the aliens because I've actually got two <laughs> alien stories that I've written, but <laughs> but but one so, of the one of the fiction stories that came out of COVID was my girlfriend and I had a conversation about whether this was maybe Mother Nature's way of teaching us a lesson, of mm -hmm. slowing us down, of of getting us back with nature, and so forth and so on, and so. I kind of wrote a very short story of about 500 words about Mother Nature as an actual being and how she finally reaches the end of her rope and she finally gets tired of her kids, her petulant teenagers, which is us, mm -hmm. us human beings, because we're not listening to her and we're not paying attention to her. And, you mm -hmm. know, we're, 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 we're t you know, we're, we're making her sand dirty and her forest dirty and her water dirty. Mm -hmm. And she says, all right, kid, that's the end of this. I'm going to throw water on you. And then a friend of mine on Facebook said, you should turn this into a story and I'm like yeah. well, I've never written a story like that and then while walking around Mexico because I couldn't go to the gym you know they were all closed due to COVID I started thinking well who is mother nature and how did she get so smart and what was she like as a child and so from there I, I created a whole story about mother nature when she was a teenager and all she wanted to do she wanted to grow up just like every teenager out there I, I don't want to be treated like a kid I want to be an adult and you know, she talks to her father, which in this case is God, and her mother, who is the original Mother Nature. And she talks to her uncles, which are Neptune and Gaia cool. and, uh, and fire and sky. Mm -hmm. And they all teach her these lessons about life and about, you know, how the world operates and everything. And so this book literally poured out of my fingertips. I was, you know, I hate this sounds so corny, but it was almost like divinely inspired. And uh, so it ended up becoming a book, you know, about Mother Nature Grows Up. And I read it to my girlfriend and she's like, well, this is really good. But, you know, you're you're bringing in a lot of the masculine stuff. And I think it needs a little bit of a feminine spin here because you are talking about Mother Nature. So this ended up being our first uh, book that we collaborated on. And, you know, we're still working on that book. But the book oh. that he's specifically referring mm. to, the alien book. <laughs> uh, was one of them came out of a conversation cool. when I asked her, I said, so if you could have any super talent, any superpower, what would it be? And so we started a conversation about what superpower you would like. And I'm going to ask that question to both of you. You guys maybe are geeks on the inside. 
Nancy Lisa, if I said, what superpower would you like to have for one year? What superpower would you like to have? I'm going to give you that wish. I'm your genie Ooh, in the lamp. Go, Nancy. I would mute certain people forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that takes me out. That takes yes. me out. So you'd be the shut the hell up girl. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a special superpower. Yes, I would, people who do damage. <laughs> I, I like that. Shut them up. <laughs> I, I don't that. think Marvel's going to buy it. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think yeah. Marvel's going to buy it. it. What the the action figure mute? <laughs> That's funny. Know. Remember the Cravens band when it's like zip it. Zip we finally it. got to see some live music. Some friends have been on our show for for years, and we got to see them in Lake Worth, Florida, and they're playing. Nice. And it's, it's settle down as the song, and mm. he's sitting there going shh shut up on stage. He's a hell of a performer. Mm. And yeah. then Nancy and I are like, look look at him do this, and he's like. Zip it. Zip it. And Zip Nancy it. hasn't stopped since then. There you go. So Lisa, on a more on a more on a more conventional note, what's your superpower that I'm giving what, you? What would you think I'm gonna be conventional with? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, Maybe you're gonna my, be unconventional. My superpower, I think, would be to when you're <laughs> this is weird. Um See, I don't want like any confession time. No, yeah. I don't want any more things to hit. Our car, Mulva. Her name is Mulva Cleopatra Doppelganger. I mm. so my superpower would be when you're driving, anything Steer that's clear. about to hit your car, uh -huh. I can be the bubble that goes around. Because I always envision, and it, it, yes. it, just to be woo woo, a spiritual psychic medium once told me when you get in the car, you envision this bubble going around your car mm. and keeping it wrapped up and nice and cozy and um, safe. And if you mm. do that and you really envision that, it will keep you safe. Um, well, I, apparently so, 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 one day it didn't, but I want to be the bubble. That's your star, that's your star Trek geek. You know, it's like you, mm. Captain Kirk and uh, Captain Picard is going through the universe. And meanwhile, you put up your deflector shield. So that's what right. you want. You want a deflector shield. I want to exactly. be a deflector of things that can hurt the car or hit the car. So that would stop accidents, broken windshields, pieces of wood that land on your car hood. <laughs> okay. Um, you guys things, need to drive in better neighborhoods, by the way. Things, no, no, because it includes what happens with potholes that go under the car. <laughs> yes. So I basically, who go in I the want potholes. to make sure that every, all vehicles on the road are protected. So that protects the people and the animals. So animals, deer would not be able to hit your car. There you go. Save or the you animals. can't hit the deer. So there it is. That's well, mine. Well, I'm a well, well, the answer to your the answer to my question was certainly unexpected. So I'm not easy to surprise. <laughs> but both of your answers just totally shocked me, and I got nothing to say. But uh, <laughs> well, what's your superpower? Well, I mean, look, most people are going to want to fly like Superman, or they're going to want to be invisible, or they're going to want to be a super super speed or anything else like that. So one of the short <laughs> stories that I created was about this young teenage boy who had a best friend named Brady and Brady confesses to him that he really is an alien from another planet. But since they're both going to be turning 18 uh, in another couple of weeks, um, he, he says Brady is the, is the alien. He says to his friend, Sammy, he said, you know, I have to leave. I have to go back to my planet. And of course, Sammy says, well, you, you pull a crap, you know, I'm not going to mm -hmm. buy this. You're, you're an alien. And so he says, well, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a special birthday present on your 18th birthday. So Sammy wakes up on the 18th birthday and come to find out that he has a superpower and he has the ability to become invisible. And it's like, okay, cool. now what? What do you do with this superpower? And then what's it like in the cool. real life? And he has it for his entire 18th mm. birthday. And then on his 19th birthday, he loses his power of invisibility. But now he has the ability to fly like Superman. It's like, great. But in today's world, are you going to go out there flying throughout the neighborhood of Tennessee? No, because they're going to take you into a laboratory and dissect you and find out how you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so and then you go home. Now COVID, COVID will come out because you've got exactly. to become a bat. <laughs> yeah. Well, the being so invisible is good. I like yeah. that then they can't catch you. No. And then the last one, you know, he has that power of, of, uh, of flying for a year. And then the last one, he... Uh, becomes faster than light. I mean, he can Ooh. he can literally drive from or walk, run from Tennessee to Seattle, which is where you're going to go. And instead of it taking several days, it would take him several minutes and everything. So basically, these became three short three short stories that I turned into a little anthology. Anthology. Mm. It's called Alien Gifts, and it's like mm. before COVID, I had the thought 
of doing that. But because I had time on my hands due to COVID, because I couldn't go anywhere and I got bored, you know, going to the beach all the time, it's kind of like I started writing. So the Mother Nature book came out, this alien book came out, another book came out about the, about the World Series of Oz, which literally came out of a dream where I was the Wizard of Oz and I was playing baseball. And so long story short, without boring you with my, uh, my you know, my bibliography or anything, uh, you know, COVID kind of, it, it like tied into my imagination. And it's like, you know, if you have interesting ideas, why not put them onto paper now? Because mm -hmm. you've thought about it for years and you're not yep. getting any younger. Yep. And so I had the time to do it. And a lot of the people in my book had those same epiphanies. It's like, you know, if I'm going to do something, why not do it now? Because I have the time to do it. I'm not distracted by travel. I'm not distracted by maybe work like I did before. And now's the time to, like one woman got big into baking and mm. one woman got big, get big into uh, walking along the seashore and collecting her own food to eat. And it's kind of like- I thought that was cool. People, people got mm. back to nature. Thank you. Yeah, I did too. People got back to nature in expected and unexpected ways. And, uh, you know, it was very, very cool. The fact that, you know, sometimes when you don't have anything better to do, you find creative things to do. I like there it. So, you know, as we keep going with this, because it ain't going away that fast, but it is changing. And hopefully it'll be, you know, maybe 2022 will be the end. You know, Jim Morrison can sing it, sing the song to yeah. COVID, you know. And hopefully, yeah. By the end of the year, yeah. You know, hopefully, whatever we all learn from this, we don't forget. Yeah. Well, yeah. what's what's what interesting we is as we're what's interesting you know, what we learn that that's that's the real story, Nancy. Is is, mm. is what is the takeaway from this? Are we smarter yeah. than we were before? Right. And I think we're, we're certainly more cynical than we were before. I think in some mm. degrees we're more divided as a country than we mm -hmm. were before. But what's interesting, what's happening now, is that and I don't want to start this controversial conversation about you know conspiracy and who to believe and what to believe. But it seems mm. like a lot of people are questioning. Uh, authority and mm -hmm. you know now you have airlines that are basically going to congress and saying well wait a second you know you're stopping flying but yet this is not necessarily spread by our airplanes it's spread by people going to concerts and it's spread by people driving and it's spread by this it's spread by that and you know you have a lot of people that are wondering whether the masks are really doing anything mm -hmm. they, they go to senate hearings without masks and they're saying you know what, we've done our tests and people are just as safe without masks as they are with masks. So it's kind of like, you know, everything that we've, everything that we were shown is saying, here are the 10 facts, here are the 10 commandments. And now it's like five of those commandments are being questioned right now. So where this is all going to end, how this is going to end, where they're going to be more cynical, more divided, uh, it's going to be really hard to tell. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. I think it's good that, mm. um, I think governments need to well, maybe I should say politicians should take their hands out of their pockets and start <laughs> using their ears. I think Absolutely. they're so used to their we're, hands see, being we're pockets going back and to things. We're yeah, going mute, back. mute yeah. your superpower. <laughs> but, um, Where's but that I think, shut the hell up girl that we need her? Yeah, mm -hmm. let's just let's commute, have a conversation. They you need to hear what the people are saying, the businesses mm -hmm. are saying, and that dialogue needs to happen. And through COVID, one thing I do think, there's division not just in, in the States politically, mm. there's division around the world politically. There's a lot of division for a lot of reasons. However, COVID put us all in one boat. Speaking of aliens, Nancy always said, yeah. when the big alien ship really mm. lands, then humans People will get will together talk to more. each other. But we, COVID was yeah. it. And I think that was an alien thing that happened to us. So I think we really, my um, we really are going to get to that point of, communication we understand the importance of mm. unity through yeah. covid we missed people people missed yeah. hugging people yeah so yeah. i think we realized just how important other humans are to yeah. the human race so hopefully well, we'll keep that in mind and you know and that's one of the potential um positives of covid is that people did reach out they realized that you know what we are one one humanity and when people are in need uh, and they can't necessarily get together with their family because their family is across the country or across the world and they can't fly to them and vice versa. You know, I think people have engaged with uh, others on a more personal level because I think the level of empathy has gone mm -hmm. up. I mean, mm -hmm. some people have gotten more hardened from it, but I think overall people realize that, hey, you know what? 
we're all in this crap together. We're exactly. all going to have to work together to stay mm -hmm. stay strong and get out of it. And you know, you know, it's like my strength is your strength, and your strength is my strength, mm -hmm. and you know, we just have to realize that this too shall pass. I mean, that's the good thing about life is that. Mm -hmm. You know, we've we've between the three of us, we've weathered recessions, and we've rather we we were ever we've uh, weathered um, you know economic downturns and upturns and everything. And, and bad times do not last forever. I mean, the recession no. of two thousand eight kicked my ass for five years, but that eventually ended. And you know, this will eventually end. And you know, what it's going to look like on the other side is yet to be seen. But I think that the reality of this is that we're going to be dealing with worldwide crises like this for the rest of our lives and all the people mm -hmm. who are listening is their lives too. And it's going to become more of a fact of life. And it's not going to be such a punch in the jaw as it was this time because it'll be, you know, what's the crisis of next year and how are we going to handle it more smartly than we did, you know, in 2020. And it's everyone just, come to the table. Yeah, it's yeah, just totally. a reminder that we are meant to help each other. Totally. Not, we went far astray with our own careers and our own families and sort of separated out. And now it's a big smack and say, whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. you're not going to stand yeah. alone. You're not. No, so we're not supposed you, to. Even our bodies no. are built to shake hands, hands yeah. fit into each other's hands for a reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nothing's better yeah. than a hug. I mean, it's mm -hmm. kind of sad, you know, the again, not to get on any type of soapbox mm -hmm. or anything, but I think one of the saddest outcomes that comes out of this that has nothing to do with travel or my book is, is the, is the young kids who, you know, if they're anywhere mm -hmm. from two years to five years of age, and this has become half of their lives, they're going to be adverse of touching each other and they're going to be mm -hmm. fearful of people and not just strangers and, and different things like this. So um, I'm a little bit concerned that 20 years down the road, they aren't going to be as socially adjusted as our generation. They're going to be years. really and, scared of germs. And they're going to be really scared. Of, yeah, yeah. Scared of germs, germaphobes. scared of people, and they're going to be, you know, sanitizing mm -hmm. their hands and, that's not good for our immunity system because it kills the good stuff along with the bad yeah. stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so hopefully that's going to have a positive outcome and, you know, COVID stories to get back to that. So I've got a surplus yeah. of COVID stories. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a pitch out if I may, for anyone who has a good story to share that came out of COVID. In other words, had COVID not happened, would you be in a different or worse place? Uh, I would love to hear your story because I have about a half a dozen of them that are kind of like, put on the side and you know my plan is to create you know a series of this you know COVID stories one and COVID stories two because I think that we all need good positive COVID stories and if we got one we want to share it yeah absolutely cool. love it so uh, everyone again uh, the book is called COVID stories positive lessons that started very very badly you can get on amazon again by norm bowers b-o-u-r and you can also go to uh, norm's website it's ask normb.wixsite.com. Have I got that right for everyone to go yeah. connect yeah. with you? And my, I'll just give you my email address, which is a lot easier. It's asknormb, A-S-K-N-O-R-M-B, asknormb at gmail.com. Anyone and everyone who's listening, you know, even though uh, right now I'm in Turkey and we'll be here for a while, um, I, find, I, I pride myself on communication and responding to people. And if anyone has a question or a story to share, you know, or just need a little bit of uplifting, because maybe you got kicked in the teeth once too often. I'll be happy to uh, to help you up there too. Awesome. So cool. everyone ask Norm. I know he does that. So he sits at the top of your email folder. <laughs> That's how he does it. Uh, also, everyone, I want to give a shout out to the International Food, Wine, Travel Writers Association. Check them out at ifwtwa.org. One thing, we watched that organization from the beginning of COVID, not sit there and go, oh my God. There was obviously always, everyone had a, oh crap. Now what do we do? They got mm -hmm. to work and put on yeah, webinars and um, networked yeah. and everybody really honed their craft. Um, you know, we've had so many writers mm -hmm. on the show and we've watched their writing improve. We've watched photography improve mm -hmm. um, as soon as they get out and um, been able to do stories. We also saw a lot of stories that people were sitting on for years that um, right. they started sharing on Instagram, social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, photos that they, you know, you've got to get that story out. There's your deadline. And then you're off to the next destination. What a lot yeah. of writers did find is that they were sitting on tons of stories that needed to still yeah. be written about places. So uh, it was a very positive time. And um, 
IFT was still going strong. So again, ifwtwa.org. Every second Tuesday, every second Friday, we air our conversations with IFTWA writers uh, and destinations representatives from destinations around the world. So everyone, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Norm. It is great to thanks, catch Norm. up with you and looking My forward pleasure. to part two. All right. Right on. Thanks. Cool.